Hi, everybody. Karen Roby and Ed Bott here for ZDNet talking today uh, about streaming music services. And Ed, you've looked at more than a dozen of these, breaking them down for us. This is quite a list here. You know, I was surprised to see how many of these services there are. You know, people think of Spotify and they think of Apple Music, but um, there's, there's a little something for everyone here. And be, just to be clear, just to put things in perspective, these are services that uh, cost money. Most of them have a free version, but uh, the, you know, the free version typically has some restrictions on it. And so the, the criteria that I placed on this for the, the services that I added here were that it has to be number one, you have to have the option, no ads. So you're not interrupted by, uh, by ads as you're listening to your music. Number two, you can skip songs if you're in a playlist and you don't like it. And some of the free plans make you, you know, they force you to keep listening. Uh, number three, you can choose your own songs and albums. And a lot of the free services, you just choose a genre or a, a canned playlist and, you know, and, and hope that you like it. And then finally, and maybe most importantly, is the option to download music for offline listening. So if you're driving around in the car, you're not at the mercy of your, uh, of your cell signal. Uh, you, can, you, know, you, can have, you can have music to go with you. So you know, there's, a, there's a big group of music services that all pretty much do the same thing with minor differences. Uh, this, you know, we start with Spotify. Uh, but, you know, everything is basically comes down to about 10 bucks a month for an individual plan or typically $15 a month for a family plan that covers five or six people. And what that gives you is access to some ridiculous number of music tracks, 40, 50, 60 million. You know, each one of the services claims a slightly different number, but they're all sort of drawing from the same catalogs. And you know they all meet these uh, these criteria. So you've got Spotify, uh, which is you know sort of the the biggest one, the biggest player of all, uh, has a very loyal following, and I like it for its playlists. Uh, then there's Apple Music, and you know Apple Music has pluses and minuses to it. They've got some exclusive content that you can't find anywhere else, um, and they also give you the option to upload some of your own personal music collection if you want to. Now, the, the only problem with that is that there's, uh, you have to use uh, your computer to do that, and you have to use iTunes. And I know there's a lot of people who don't like iTunes, uh, you know, but, uh, but you know, Apple Music, uh, great service available on every platform, and uh, you know, good choice there. Google has Google Play Music, which they are slowly transitioning to YouTube music. And you know, Google also allows you to upload your own tracks. Uh, you know, and you just use a Chrome extension or a little utility that they've got. And then finally, among the big players, there's Amazon Music Unlimited. And you know, they're, they've got the same stuff that everybody else has. The, their real uh, claim to fame, I guess, is that if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you get uh, two bucks off. So, you know, you can save a few bucks if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber. And, you know, people who have those Prime subscriptions are, you know, usually bargain hunters. And then finally, in that same group of these services that offer, you know, one big catalog, download your stuff, listen to it wherever you are, is a, a French service called Deezer, which I had never heard of before. Um, but they've got a feature called Flow. And, you know, you, you train it for the music that you like. You click the Flow button. And it just starts playing music that um, that I've been surprised at how good the algorithm is. So you know that's one. Then there's Napster. Now, Napster, right? Nineteen yeah. nineties. Still around, yeah. They're still <laughs> they're still around. Uh, at least the brand name is still around. They got bought by another name that's a blast from the past called Rhapsody, and Rhapsody which was a part of real networks, uh, but mostly they're in the business of powering uh, music services for other, uh, other corporations like iHeart Music and even BMW just announced they have a partnership with uh, Napster. Uh, but they're still out there and you know, if you want to party like it's 1995, uh, you, know, you, can, you can subscribe to Napster. And then finally in that sort of mainstream category is Pandora which has been around forever and you know everyone sort of thinks about it as 
sort of, you know, you click a button and it just plays a channel, but they've expanded Pandora to make it more like some of the other music services. So you can choose your song, you can choose your album, you can download things for offline listening. So that's sort of the, the mainstream category there. All right, you're, you're really taking me back to my college days now. I hear that with Napster, <laughs> dating myself, Ed. Okay, so uh, what about, let, let's say, uh, say these options just don't appeal to someone they think they're boring or, or just doesn't appeal to the type of music they like. Options uh, for people like that? There are, and uh, you know, there's, there's people who just don't like the big corporate vibe that comes with you know these big giant mega corporations working with big giant mega music catalogs. And so for them, uh, I found a bunch of services that do specialized things. So if you're a classical music fan, there's two services. One is called Idagio Plus, and the other is called Prime Phonic. And the interesting thing, you know, there's classical music on all of the mainstream services too, but my friends who are classical music fans tell me it's really hard to find the music you're looking for. And, you know, because you're typically looking for uh, a composer and an orchestra and a conductor doing a particular performance. And those things don't really fit into the search engines that that power the mainstream engines. So, you know, those two services are really built for classical music fans um, and they're, they're very competitively priced. There are two more services. Uh, one is called nugs.net and nugs as in, you know, the little green buds that you, you know, roll up in papers or you put in a pipe or something. Okay. It's, it sort of gives you a clue about what, <laughs> what nugs.net is all about. It's, uh, it has live concert recordings mm -hmm. that you can stream or download uh, or buy so if you want to you know, burn them to CDs and really go old school there. Um, but it's really focused on uh, jam bands. You know, the Dave Matthews Band and Dead and Company and Pearl Jam, uh, you know, bands like that. Uh, great, great service, you know, for old hippies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say that with love. Uh, <laughs> of course. And then, there's, uh, and then there's another service called Live X Live, which is powered by Slacker. There's another name from our past. Um, and that's also, they also specialize in live recordings, but with a more, um, a more eclectic uh, catalog that isn't just jam band focused. So they're kind of fun. And then finally, there's a group of services that focus on high quality music. So, you know, most of the stuff that you listen to in these streaming services is, you know, basically it's MP3s being, being streamed across the wire to your device. And those are at various bit rates, 256K is uh, fairly typical. Um, so the, the, uh, the high fidelity services uh, will give you a higher bit rate uh, compressed stream if you want it, but they also give you the option for uncompressed uh, music, which is, you know, that's the full bandwidth uh, capable of playing on a great big living room system. And that's really what you need to have. You know, you need to have those giant speakers and a good uh, amplifier to appreciate these. But you've got uh, Tidal, and Tidal, T-I-D-A-L, is a service that was uh, launched by a bunch of music artists, including Beyonce's husband, Jay-Z. He was uh, sort of the, the leader of that. It's a very artist-focused uh, uh, label and, uh, and a you know, really good service. Uh, has, you know, ha has some good ethics behind it, and you know, they're sort of fun. Um, then there's another French service called Quobuz, Q-O-B-U-Z. Um, and, you know, I, I've been trying them out for a couple months. Uh, really interesting stuff, definitely off the beaten track. Um, you know, they'll point you to a lot of things like jazz recordings and, um, you know, pop music that you, that you won't necessarily hear uh, on the, you know, on the, the billboard charts. And then finally, there's Amazon Music HD, which is exactly like Amazon Music Unlimited, but it offers you the uh, option for uh, uncompressed music. So, you know, there's, there's a little something for everyone in there from, you know, mainstream, I want to hear, you know, everything that's new this week from my favorite rap artists 
down to, you know, classical fans and people with golden ears. Yeah, definitely. Everything in between. And, and, and it's a lot of information, Ed, or uh, a lot of things to consider. So if you kind of had to boil it down a little bit for people that are trying to make a decision here, what are a couple just key highlights you would, that you would pass on to them? Well, I think, you know, the number one thing is, uh, do you have a personal collection that you want to integrate with this service? Because if that's the case, then there's, a, then there's about three or four services that you really want to consider. And I highlight all of them uh, in the article there. So you can go check the details there. And, you know, you can, you know, there's limitations on how many tracks you can upload. So it depends a little bit on the size of your music collection. But, you know, most people have a, a, a CD or two or a live recording or something. It is not a streaming service. So if that's important to you, then you want to steer yourself towards one of those services. Um, there's also the, uh, the family plans. You know, not every service offers a family plan and not every family plan is the same. For example, Spotify is extremely rigid about their restriction that the members of your family have to be living under the same roof and they will, you know, they will cut you off if they think that, uh, you know, that your kid who's up at college a thousand miles right. away is, uh, you know, is, is freeloading on your family plan. So, you know, that's one to look for. Um, there are all sorts of discounts that are available for these plans. Uh, you know, the one that I mentioned is from Amazon Prime, but there's a, there's a, a good chance that your cable provider or your uh, mobile service offers uh, a discounted music plan. So you might want to check with them and see, you know, if the plan that they offer is at a good price and whether it meets the requirements that you have. And then finally, and most importantly, every one of these services offers a free trial. Uh, at least 14 days, usually 30 days, and some as long as three months. And if you're not sure, why not try it? Because, you know, it doesn't, doesn't cost anything uh, to try. Just make yourself a note if you've given them your credit card number to cancel that trial, um, yeah. you know, before you get, before the first charge hits your credit card. Um, but I'm a big fan of using those free trials to see whether a service is right for you. Yeah, a lot to consider, but it's good to have choices, especially, you know, when it comes to, to music, because we're all a little bit different about uh, what we like, what we want to hear, all that good stuff, Ed. Uh, well, I know you've got all of the details on pricing and plans and all of that uh, in your full article there on LeadyNet. So we hope you guys will check it out. Thanks so much for watching today.